trust I shall not be afraid what can man do to me in God I trust I shall not be afraid what can man do to me show mercy Lord to me for man would swallow me outright he me oppresseth while he doth against me daily fight they daily would me swallow up that hate me spitefully for they be many that do fight against me almost oh, high in god i trust i shall not be afraid what can man do to me when i'm afraid i'll trust in thee in god i'll praise his word I will not fear what flesh can do, my trust is in the Lord. Each day they rest my words, their thoughts against me are all for ill. They meet, they lurk, they mark my steps, waiting my soul to kill. In God I trust I shall not be afraid, what can man do to me? But shall they by iniquity escape thy judgment so? O God, with indignation down do thou the people throw. My wanderings all what they have been, thou knowest their number took. Into thy bottle put my tears, are they not in thy book? In God I trust I shall not be afraid, what can man do to me? My foes shall when I cry turn back, I know it God is for me. In God his word I'll praise his word, in God shall praise it be. In God I trust I will not fear what man can do to me. Thy vows upon me are, O God, I'll render praise to Thee. In God I trust I shall not be afraid, what can man do to me? Wilt Thou not who from death be saved, my feet from falls keep free? To walk before God in the light of those that live in Thee. God, I trust I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And blessed be his kingdom. Now and forever. Amen. Our processional hymn is number 339.
service for Holy Communion begins on page one of your bulletins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Upon Safe, we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 O Lord, who hast taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth, send thy Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the very bond of peace and of all virtues without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the 12th verse of the 10th chapter of the 5th book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good, Behold, the Lord your God belong to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples, as you are this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him and hold fast to him, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and terrifying these things that your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in heaven. You shall, therefore, love the Lord your God, and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, and his commandments, always. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll rise for the psalm. The congregation responds with a bold print. Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Yes, I shall keep it with my whole heart. 
Make me go in the path of your commandments. For therein is my desire. Incline my heart unto your testimonies. And not to covetousness. Oh, turn away my eyes, lest they behold vanity. O oh, establish your word in your servant. That I may fear you. Take away the rebuke that I am afraid of. For your judgments are good. Behold, my delight is in your commandments. O oh, revive me in your righteousness. Let your loving mercy come also unto me, O oh Lord. Even your salvation according unto your word. So shall I have an answer for my adversaries. O oh, take not the word of your truth utterly out of my mouth. For my hope is in your judgments. So shall I always keep your law. Yes, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty. For I will speak your commandments. I will speak of your testimonies also, even before kings. And I will not be ashamed. And my delight shall be in your commandments. My hands also will I lift up unto your commandments, which I have loved. And my study shall be in your statutes. Glory to the Epistle is written in the 13th chapter of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understood all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have not all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, even then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now in faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gradual hymn is number 482.
Jerusalem. And everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day he will rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth is passing by. He cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. Praise be to thee. Praise be to thee, O Christ. continues on the bottom of page four of your bulletins as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Lord and the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. May be seated. Mm -hmm. Welcome everyone this morning from the Church of the Holy Trinity on Tuesday Decima Sunday. Just a few announcements. Um, of course, uh, as I've been asked in the last couple of weeks, on Tuesday we're going to have our Tro Bacon Tuesday dinner where the men will cook and clean up. Uh, that dinner will be held at start at 5 and dinner will be served at 7 and then Wednesday of course starts our Ash Wednesday uh, season of Lent and Ash Wednesday service will be that day at, again at 7 p.m. and then next Sunday of course is the first Sunday of Lent. Um, Father Carl should be back this Wednesday uh, to conduct the service for Ash Wednesday so um, we'll be glad to see him back. Other than that I don't have any other We have a church work day on Saturday, so if you have any questions, go see Jonathan about that. Anything else before we continue? Okay. Uh, our sermon hymn will be number 423, verse 1. Also, since, uh, you know, Father Carl, we've missed him uh, greatly, but I'd like to thank Father Eric for filling in so uh, kindly and uh, carrying the ball over the goal line, so to speak, on this Super Bowl Sunday, anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Please be seated. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? This line from the Old Testament reading speaks of the law of God. In our series for pre-Lent and Lent concerning the elements of the communion service related to our sin and need for God, we focus today on the Decalogue and summary of the law that comes immediately after the colic for purity. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit as we pray in the purity collect is God's word and submission to his word through God's grace. As noted in Scripture, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, this means every single human being except for Jesus has sinned and fallen short of the law of God. The demand of the law is perfection. A 99.9% .9 score on observing the law earns the same consequences as a 0% score on observing the law, eternal death. Only Jesus fulfilled the law perfectly for our sakes and in our place forever saving us. Yet, in his fulfillment of the law as he taught, he did not abolish the law. It is still our call as necessary fruit borne by God's work within us to love him and to love our neighbors and enemies. Today, let us reflect on the recitation of the law and the summary of the law in our communion service through the requirements as stated in our Old Testament lesson. Fear the Lord your God. First, and what God requires of us in his law is to fear the Lord your God. To fear the Lord is to honor and reverence him in our lives. The Decalogue is divided into two parts, our duty towards God and our duty towards each other. When we fear the Lord, 
we submit to and ask his grace in following the first four commandments. We submit to the fact that he alone is God and there are no others. This fear of the Lord guides us to gratefully worship him alone and no other. The fear of God aids us in speaking only in reverence and awe of God and never in vain. Finally, a healthy fear of God is to honor his holy name and worship on his day, the day of Sabbath rest. In the new covenant, our Sabbath rest is Jesus Christ through his finished work that enables us to live in loving fear and dependence upon him. The element of the law concerning God and our relationship to him is the following from verse 38 of our psalm. Oh, establish your word in your servant that I may fear you. The fear of the Lord is fostered in us by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Spirit that establishes us in God's law and word, to live by and submit to all our days. Within the first four commandments, we see how his word is established through honoring his name and observing his Sabbath day in worship. The opposite of taking God's name in vain is to devote our lives to the reverential reading and study of his word, and in worship with communion, we are confronted with the law of God, or uh, at least the summary of the law, every week. We need these constant reminders of the standard God holds us to, how we cannot uphold to them perfectly, and how Jesus Christ fulfilled them without spot or blemish to save us from the penalty of our disobedience of them. As part of our worship, we learn and are fortified in our resolve to depend on the Lord to keep his law. We're constantly beset with the temptation to fear man over God in this life. As verse 39 of the psalm continues, Take away that, the rebuke that I am afraid of, for your judgments are good. Commonly, we fear, we fear the lashback of our faith, for our faith from people of all sorts. Yet God calls us not to fear men, but him alone. A healthy fear of the Lord is to battle our temptations, to fear people with obedience and honor to God alone, culminating in worship and service. Verse 46 of the psalm continues with what fear of God resembles over and against a fear of people. I will speak of your testimonies also, even before kings, and will not be ashamed. A life of fearing God is a life that, as verse 47 of the psalm states, is one that delights and loves God's commandments. In this loving gratitude of his word, we are called to do what is natural in anything that we love, speak of it to others. Unbelievers hate this and will seek to drive us to a fear of them, to silence us from speaking of his word and law. In fear of God, we must obey God over humanity, as St. Peter replied to the Jewish religious authorities that told him and other apostles to stop preaching about Jesus Christ, to walk in all his ways. The next element of answering what the Lord requires of his people is that we are to walk in all his ways. In the Decalogue, in the summary of the law, the second part after our duty to God is our duty toward our neighbors. Walking in all his ways includes fearing him through believing and worshiping only him as well as honoring his name and not taking his name in vain. Flowing out of our honor of him alone is honoring and submitting to him and how we live with others, the second part of the commandments and summary of the law. As St. John wrote in uh, 1 John 4:20, if anyone says I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has seen. Our worship service in including the element of the law and the summary of the law cements the importance of conveying what God requires in relation to how we treat each other. As with the first part of the law, only Jesus fulfilled it perfectly to redeem us and thus grants us the status as God's children to depend on him, seeking his help to love each other as he commands. Worship and the rep repetition employed in liturgies going back to biblical times is meant to teach us of God's word and instill the need to walk in what it teaches. As verse 33 of our psalm states, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. 
Every time we gather for worship, we resolve to submit to God and help and his help to keep his word unto the end. We experience this in the responses we say or sing when we hear the law recited. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Then, to conclude after the last commandment is recited, Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. We ask for mercy due to the point of our failure in keeping these laws as required, 100% externally and internally, 100% of the time. In this, we acknowledge only Christ fulfilled all purpose perfectly so that we are recipients of his merciful work, reaping the eternal benefits we could not earn. Then we ask his grace to be with us, to incline our hearts to each of his laws, writing them on our hearts so that we are equipped to follow him. These petitions we say or sing in response to his law and application to our lives comes from verse 36 of our psalm and other parts of scripture. Incline my heart unto your testimonies, and not to covetousness. These petitions for mercy regarding his law are reflected in verse 41 of our psalm. Let your loving mercy come also unto me, O Lord, even your salvation according unto your word. Loving God out of a fear for him enables us to love others, to walk in his liberty to do so, as verse 45, 45 of the psalm states. Obeying God through the second part of the commandments is not only commanded, but also set as, as an example of how he treats us, seen ultimately in how Jesus treated others in his earthly ministry. Verse 18 of our Old Testament lesson states, he executes justice for the fatherless and the widow, loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. In his work of love for us, we in turn by his grace and his name love others. In essence, if we hate others, it is an act of dishonoring or taking the name of God in vain. Fearing God is to love those this world despises, such as widows, orphans, sojourners, and even enemies. All of this is reinforced in our reading and study of the word, as well as every time we celebrate Holy Communion. To close, fearing God and walking in all his ways is something we know from scripture that is deemed so important that, is, that it is an in, integral part of public and private worship. Not, these are not external uh, only ideas, but as the last part of the answer to the question posed in the Old Testament lesson of loving God and serving him with all our hearts and with all our souls. It is easy to instill wrote obedience through treating people like animals to train them to do as commanded, such as seen in abusive relationships where people are punished until their souls are crushed to comply, not, only, not out of love, but out of abject fear of what man does to the body out of cruelty. It is wholly different, though, in how God operates with us, out of patient love, abiding love, and a love that is fulfilled that fulfilled all that we could not accomplish for ourselves. In this, we ask his merciful grace to be able to follow his word, not only externally, but from the very heart, soul, and mind, out of loving dependence, and his freedom from the bonds of cruel sin and death. May this be so in our midst, as we are reminded every time we worship. Amen. Let us remember the words of our Lord, how it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Christians of other branches of Christ's church who have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit are affectionately invited to the Lord's table. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church humility. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant, give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God about the need. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, and judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail that are heavy, and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. <laughs> We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right 
so to do. It is very meet, right, and are bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, According to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
the sins of the world. Come, all has been made ready. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is your blood. Preserve thy body and soul and pray last in life. Take any of this in the name of Christ I have given to you on my heart. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given. Preserve thy body and soul and pray last in life. Take any of this in the name of Christ I have given you. Feed on him in my heart by faith. The Lord is with you. May you go in his peace.
Father, make me holy. Jesus, make me holy. Spirit, make me holy. Holy One. The Father. desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion and here we offer and present unto thee O Lord ourselves our souls and bodies to be a reasonable holy and living sacrifice unto thee Humbly beseeching thee that we and all partakers of the Holy Communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who would duly receive these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. And that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thine everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Remain kneeling as we sing our Shrovetai hymn, hymn number 521, verse 3.
peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and in the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 420. Thanks be to God.